2920. What's up shooters? Thanks for joining the Eagle's Nest. So check this out. I'm out here at the range, 100 yards, testing out the six millimeter ARC, shooting 108 grain ELD bullets. Just shot an amazing group. I'm pretty excited. I think we're at a good accuracy node. Check this out. Okay, so here's the results. Started off with 26.2, that wasn't looking good. 26.3, definitely tighten it up. And 26.5 is what we shot before, and that's got a pretty good accuracy node. However, they chrono numbers. Unfortunately, the speed on the Hodgson 4895 is pretty low. Um, we're getting pretty good SDs. That's the first 26.1 grains. And then we shot 26.3 and it jumped up a little bit. So we got over the 2700 mark. Still a little too slow than what I like. But however, uh, the one that gave us the best group out of Hodgdon was 26.5 grains. Um, standard deviation of 10.8, extreme spread of 25. I think a lot of it could be done, um, could actually lower that standard deviation by doing some annealing. Now, what I've done on the brass, all I've done is just resize the brass. I haven't even cleaned it. So honestly, just uh, resizing it, uh, loading it, and going, coming back out here, it's all I've been doing. And I'm on the uh, third firing of that brass, so it's definitely needing a, annealing. Anyways, on the CFE 223, this is where we picked up some speed. So on the CFE 223 at 30 grains, which was this awesome little group right here, check that out. I mean, that's, that's performing awesome. Five shot group um, with the magneto speed, so I'll have to definitely verify that again without the magneto speed. But the velocities were up there at 2,800 and uh, you know 2,820 feet a second, average of 2,827, standard deviation of 10. So that's pretty respectable for what it is. Then we stepped it up 0.5 grains and almost got uh, 2,930 feet a second. Obviously, we got some pretty big spread, standard deviation of 27.6. So I have to work with uh, CFE 223 a little bit, but I think at 30 grains is where the ticket is. The speed is not bad, 2,800 feet a second. Um, I was hoping for a 29, but so I'm gonna push the envelope a little bit and go above 31 grains, probably 31 and a half grains, and uh, see if we can lower that standard deviation number. Well, pretty good performance so far, pretty happy. Some outstanding groups as is. I think the six arc does have some pretty good potential be a good competitor for uh, PRS. All right, folks, so we're back out here at the range. We're gonna start off with 30 grains of CFE 223. Now these cases have been uh, clean, been annealed, prepped. This thing should give us the best groups possible. Obviously, pretty hot today, over 110 degrees. So shooting at 100 yards, we're gonna look at the chronograph and I'll have the Eagle target cam going. Okay, so going over the groups, here's my two setter rounds aiming at here. And here was 31 grains. I got a little bit of horizontal shifting there. That was definitely me. I could definitely tell that today I wasn't really on it like I was yesterday. So even though we have a really good group here at 100 yards at 30 grains, 31 grains seem to lower the standard deviation number. So I'm gonna work in between 30 grains and 31 grains. That might be something that might give us a pretty good group. I'm looking for half mid of angle, but a lower standard deviation number in the single digits of, you know, anything under seven or eight SD, I think is a pretty good load. But 5.9 at 31 grains, uh, that's that. So not bad. And we shot 31.3 grains. So it went from uh, pretty much mild to wild and this is where I start, started seeing some really high pressure signs got a uh, two big uh, extra Extractor marks on the on the cases themselves. So 31.3 grains in 110 degree weather uh, With this load seated at 2.363 is my overall length. I'm using a uh, federal small rifle AR match primers and yeah, even though these uh like the groups tightened up and 
I got a pretty awesome um, velocity. I was out there at 2,970 feet a second. Uh, that's definitely max pressure. All right, so I actually headed out back to the range to work up a load in between 30 grains of CFE 223 and 31. So here's the results. Okay, 30.6 grains, here we go. Two thousand nine hundred eleven. 2904. All right, folks, the last groups of the day. That was 30.8. That is a pretty good group. Definitely sub MOA. Started off at 30.3, went on to 30.6. That is a pretty good group as well. And actually at 30.6, that gave me just above 2,900 feet a second. I don't know if you can see this, 2,907 feet a second average with a standard deviation of 3.3, extreme spread of seven. So that is absolutely amazing. I think this load will work. Obviously there is a node there as well. Uh, right at 30.8, I'll start to see some pressure signs. So at this uh, weather here, uh, this is about the hottest it's gonna get. So I'm pretty safe with that. I think I'm gonna stick with uh, 30.6 grains. And if you guys have a keen eye, you've probably seen this on the rifle. Now this, I just put this on before I came out here. This is a Harrell's Precision tuner break now i will be doing a video on this messing around with this load later on and seeing exactly what this will do so on the next video now that we have some really low standard deviation numbers we'll go ahead and see exactly how this harold's precision tuner break works hopefully tighten up that group and get one of those quarter moa groups so i've already hit my goal of doing a half minute group consistency uh, with low standard deviation numbers and over 2,900 feet a second. That's essentially what I wanted to do with this 108 grain ELD for competition. But with the Harold's Precision Muzzle Brake, we'll see that it will tighten up and help improve that group. Play with the harmonics a little bit. So folks, to wrap this up, we are getting outstanding results with the 6mm ARC with Hodgen 4895 and CFE 223. Now... The CFE 223 seems to be the ticket for this cartridge if you're trying to push velocities. So what I'm trying to achieve is 2,900 feet a second, half minute angle group consistency, and low standard deviation number. And we did that today using 30.6 grains of CFE 223. Now 4895 was also a good performer except the velocities were a lot lower. And I've even taken out this cartridge and already took out some small game. At nighttime, right after testing, I had a few rounds left, and I finally found that damn kit fox has been taking out my chickens. So at 200 yards, I pretty much saw its eyes gleaming down the road, and aimed right at it, held dead center, and took him out. So this cartridge, to me, serves two purposes. For me, what I'm primarily looking for is a PRS cartridge. So there's been a lot of comments on my previous videos saying, hey man, why did you choose this cartridge in a bolt action? You know, obviously there's cartridges out there that are going to outperform this thing ballistically, like the 243, 6mm Creedmoor, yada yada. There's three reasons why I chose this cartridge. And the first one is the fact that I'm looking for a PRS cartridge. If you don't know, PRS competitors switched over to a, what I like to call a mini 6mm Magnum. And the reason why they do that is recoil mitigation to get more shots downrange on target faster. The smaller 6mm cartridges are definitely the the ticket for winning PRS matches. That said, there's the six millimeter Dasher and the six millimeter GT. They got the PPC as well, the uh, BR, all of those little mini short Magnum six millimeter cartridges. However, they have uh, feeding issues, which brings me up to reason number two that I'm choosing this cartridge. Out of all the other six millimeter cartridges out there, like the six millimeter Dasher, 
there tends to be a problem with feeding out of a regular 308 AICS mag. And what happens is basically the bolt tries to pick up the cartridge, it nose dives, and goes right into the mag well, causing a jam. Now, what I've noticed in my testing so far using a regular AICS mag 308, I have no feeding issues whatsoever. Now, I do have ejection issues, and that's simply because my ejector is worn out. So I got some replacement parts on the way. But besides that, the 6mm ARC is definitely a good overall length. Obviously, I got quite a bit of room to play around with some heavier projectiles and push these things out pretty far. And there's zero feeding issues. So that's the second reason why I'm choosing this cartridge in a bolt action. So the third and final reason why I'm choosing this cartridge in a bolt action is simply because I'm trying to save some money, both in reloading supplies as well as barrel life. Now, it is proclaimed that the 6mm ARC will have uh, quite a bit of barrel life. And how can I assume this? Well, it's simple mathematics. You got a cartridge that utilizes 30, point, or 30 grains of powder and a burn rate around the regular 223 cartridges. That said, if you compare this over, for instance, a 6mm Creedmoor, we all know that that burns out the barrel pretty quick. Um, folks tend to, to think that it's the speed that burns out the barrel which is actually incorrect. Speed does correlate with what happens behind it, but what it is that burns out the barrel is heat. Now, the biggest cause of heat is basically the burn rate of the powder. Now, six millimeter Creedmoor utilizes 4350 powder. Hydrogen 4350 is, seems to be the number one powder to that. That is on the third column of the burn rate. It's a slower burning powder. So when the powder ignites, it's gonna burn, 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 and finally go out the barrel. And you got a six millimeter bore. So you got a very slow burning powder and uh, very high peak pressures. So all of that heat and gas jetting is going to happen around the throat. You know, obviously you're going to have a longer duration of burn and all of that heat is going to gather right here in the throat. And that's the reason why a lot of folks in six millimeter cartridges like the 243, six millimeter uh, uh, Creedmoor are seeing very high uh, throat erosion. It's simply because the powder is just burning longer and keeping that heat uh, dwelling right here. Now the 6mm ARC, in my opinion, is a very fine balance, um, very efficient uh, cartridge, simply because, like I said, it uses a faster burning powder, still does a pretty good performance, and it's able to completely burn the powder within 18 inches of the barrel. That said, what's going to happen, it ignites the powder, and it just whoosh, goes down the barrel. So what I've noticed, I'm um, comparing uh, this with um, 6.5 Creedmoor and the other 6mm uh, Creedmoor barrels that I've shot. I'm actually able to hold the barrel after 20 shots and it doesn't seem to heat up as much as those other cartridges. So yes, I definitely think that this cartridge will definitely have some very high uh, round counts down the barrel before you start seeing some accurate depletion. I'm going to guess um, it's going to be close to 223. And the reason why I say that is if you compare the 223 projectile, for instance a 75 grain um, bullet loaded up with Varget, which is around the same burn rate as CFE 223. Uh, usually folks use 26.5 grains of uh, Varget behind a 75 grain bullet, and obviously they're able to get around 3,000 to 4,000 rounds down the barrel. Um, so I'm gonna guess that this cartridge is gonna be around 3,800 to 4,000 rounds before we start seeing some major accuracy depletion or throat erosion. Now going over the reloading components, there's a lot of folks saying, hey man, you jumped on the bandwagon, yada yada yada. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've actually been playing around with this cartridge for roughly five years, uh, technically in the Wildcat world. Now they have the 6mm AR, they have the 6mm uh, Grendel, and also the 243 LBC. And that's what I've been playing with for the last four or five years is... And in AR, I've been playing around with the 243 LBC. Essentially the same thing, the same, almost the same dimensions. And I was getting uh, some awesome results just like this out of an AR. Um, was able to achieve around 2,800 feet a second uh, with Hodgen 4895 and also uh, 8208 XBR. So I got to pick up some 8208 and basically see what he'll do out of the bolt action. So reloading components, like I said, you got a 30 cent projectile. Um, cases are going to be pretty easy to find. You don't have to fire form the cases like the 6BR um, and all of that uh, or buy expensive uh, cartridges or cases from manufacturers like ADG, Lapua or any of that. So 6.5 Grendel brass will be easy to find. I can utilize that and basically neck it down. 
There's also going to be some manufacturers out there producing brass. Hopefully Starline gets on board. Obviously I could order the 6.5 Grendel brass. 30 grains of powder and a small rifle primer. This puts this cartridge around 80 cents loaded. Compared to, for instance, 6mm GT, which you're over a dollar. In a PRS match, you got roughly seven to nine courses of fire. You're roughly uh, doing 60 to 110 rounds downrange on a uh, given match. That could get pretty pricey. So that said, barrel life, reloading, um, this is the reason why I'm choosing it on a bolt action. Well, folks, that's really all I got. I want to say thanks for watching. Actually, I want to see your comments below. What do you guys think of the 6mm ARC? With the performance you're seeing today out of a bolt action, comment below, let me know what you think. As always, folks, stay safe out there, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Retro.